At the beginning of the Second World War, Enigma 1 was the most widely used German encryption machine. Just a few months after the outbreak of war, the British were able to break the Enigma code almost daily, thanks to the preparatory work carried out by the Polish Secret Service and, above all, thanks to the analytical work of Alan Turing. The Enigma messages were sent in encrypted Morse code. Intercepted by the Y stations and transported by motorbike to Bletchley Park, where they were cracked using a plain text attack and the electromechanical Turing Welchman bomb. From June 1941, the Y stations intercepted a new type of signal, which the British called New Music. It was an encrypted radio teletype signal and could not be deciphered at first. On the 30th of August 1941, the German radio operators made two serious operating errors during the teletype connection between Vienna and Athens. A ciphertext almost 4,000 characters long was transmitted. However, there were connection problems, which is why the message was sent a second time. The crucial error was that the same key was used for the second message as for the first. The second error was that the identical plain text was not entered but rather a slightly shorter text due to omissions and abbreviations, which slightly shifted the plain text in relation to the key and thus made the attack possible in the first place. The British intercepted both secret texts and sent him to Bletchley Park, where Colonel John Tiltman took over the analysis of these texts. He recognized that it was a teletype code with a Vernum-like encryption. Colonel Tiltman added the two ciphertexts, bit by bit, modulo 2 using exclusive OR. As the same key had been used for both ciphertexts, the key eliminated itself by adding the two ciphertexts and the result was not only the sum of the two ciphertexts modulo 2, but also the sum of the two plain texts. The first seven characters were identical in both texts and thus cancelled each other out. The remaining almost 4,000 secret characters were different. The next step is to try possible plain text words in all possible places. In the right places, the word in one text is eliminated and the plain text of the other message becomes visible at this point. Probable words are for example number, which means number, or geheim, which means secret. In the shorter text, you can see that number has been abbreviated to NR, followed by a space and two control characters to switch to digits and then a seven. It can be assumed that this also followed in the longer text, which can now be inserted. This makes the complete number 7027 visible, which can now be used again in the longer text. In the first Geheim in the long text, an Indeut appears at this position in the short text. This could mean, an Deutscher. After a control character for switching to letters, the word Geheim is now visible, followed by two blanks and KR which is the abbreviation for Kriegswichtig. That means war important. The long text will also say, and Deutsche, a little further on and you can systematically try out where this is and then get further plain text from the shorter message. You can also check whether the second Geheim is also followed by two spaces and KR as with the first Geheim. And indeed, the word attaché is now visible. What could, and Deutsche attaché mean? Probably, and Deutschen Militärattache to the German military attaché. After two weeks of puzzling, Colonel Tiltman had completely deciphered both ciphertexts. What was much more important, however, was that this enabled him to extract an almost 4,000 character sequence of the key used in these two ciphertexts, because the following also applies to Vernum encryption. Ciphertext plus plaintext equals key. Nevertheless, this key was only valid for the rotor positions used in these two ciphertexts, which were no longer used in later messages. It was also completely unknown how this key sequence was generated, except that 12 encryption rotors were probably used. After a few weeks with no further progress, newly qualified cryptologist William Tutt, who had just arrived at Bletchley Park, was set to work analyzing the code further. He noticed that the intercepted messages had 25 different letters in the front 11 letters of the 12-letter key indicator, but only 23 in the 12th position, leading him to conclude that the backmost rotor only had 23 teeth, but the others had at least 25. During his training as a cryptologist, 
William Tutt had learnt about the Kasowski test developed in the 19th century, which was originally designed to break the letter-based Viginaire cipher, which usually used code words that were usually quite short. For example, if you have a code word of length 14, every 14th character is encrypted with the same letter. You can now write the ciphertext in 14 columns next to each other and each column contains all the ciphertext characters that were encrypted with the same key letter. For longer ciphertexts, it is then possible to analyze the letter frequency as with the ancient Caesar cipher. William Tutt came up with the idea of applying a similar test to individual bits of the key sequence obtained by Colonel Tiltman. He decided to use the first of the five bits of each key character. He now wanted to check whether a subdivision into 23 columns would reveal conspicuous patterns and, for the sake of simplicity, he wanted to test the 25 as well. He therefore broke the key sequence, which was around 3,800 characters long, into 23 times 25, i.e. 575 columns, or to be more precise, only the first bit of each character. He wrote these on a long strip of paper next to or below each other. However, the rearmost Lorenz rotor is not actually used to encrypt the first bit, but the last bit, as it turned out later. By chance, William Tutt nevertheless came up with the correct solution with his test. Contrary to his assumption, it was not patterns between individual columns that became visible, but a strange pattern diagonally shifted by one column per row. He therefore changed his arrangement by removing one column, leaving 574 columns instead of 575, and wrote the key bits again next to and below each other according to the new arrangement. In fact, repeating patterns were now recognizable. Tut could mechanically rule out the possibility that a rotor with 574 teeth was used in the German cipher machine. Still, 574 is 14 times 41. Therefore he concluded that a rotor with 41 teeth was involved in encrypting the first bit. Nonetheless, it was not so simple that the key would repeat exactly for every 41 characters. There were recognizable irregularities. After William Tutt had achieved this breakthrough, he was supported by the entire analysis department in further breaking the key. Without ever having seen a Lorenz machine, they were finally able to find out that each key bit was generated by two rotors, one that regularly advanced with each input character and another with a regular motion. The two other rotors were identified as control rotors for the irregular motions of the first five. Once the basic structure of the Lorenz machine was known, it became possible to break the Lorenz code regularly. The main difficulty now was the changing key and cam settings. As this was far more complex than the key settings of the Enigma, an electromechanical machine such as the Turing Welchman bomb, which was used to break the Enigma keys, was not sufficient to break the Lorenz code regularly, as an electromechanical machine would have been far too slow. The telecommunications engineer Thomas Flowers, who had already worked with electronic tubes on a smaller scale, suggested building a purely electronic computer with thousands of tubes, which eventually became the first ever electronic, freely programmable computer in 1943 as Colossus, two years before the American ENIAC. The breaking of the Lorenz secret messages, supported by the Colossus computers, provided the Allies with valuable information before the D-Day invasion and was therefore decisive for the course of the war. I hope you found the video informative and interesting and would appreciate positive comments and subscriptions to my channel. See you soon.